Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for your anointing that is available to us. And Lord, even as we have received freely, we freely give right now. And I bless everyone at the sound of my voice. Let every burden in their lives be lifted right now. And I command those yokes be destroyed. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be free from every bondage. Everything that I've held you bound in whatever way, be free. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking from John chapter 6. Jesus, no, John chapter 4. Jesus was with the woman at the well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And she asked him, Hey, our father worship in this mountain but you guys say we need to go to jerusalem to worship and jesus told her listen this is the truth it's neither here nor jerusalem why because god is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth now notice jesus said the hour is coming when the true worshipers what does that tell you before this time there were no true worshipers now listen and god is seeking these worshipers but jesus said now is the time why did he say now is the time because you see it will now be possible in the New Testament. Now, when I say New Testament, I mean after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, when the Holy Ghost came and the church was beaten. You know, now listen, he says, this is the time when those who would truly worship God will be, will have arrived on, on the scene. Why? Because they are going to depend on the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Lord, to guide them even in their worship. So worship is not just about what you feel. So the same thing with offering, the same thing with tithing. It's not what you think you should give. It must be by the Spirit. What does that mean? You must be led by the Spirit to give whatever offering, whatever tithe. And secondly, you must be led by the Spirit to tell you where you should give it. Now that's the only way, like I told you yesterday, that's the only way you can guarantee that God has accepted it. Anything below that is under probability. And you don't want to live your life under probability. See? So, Jesus was saying, it's not about the place, but the true worshippers, worshipping their Father. Now, the mark of a true worshipper is this. He hears God. He hears God. Now, you know, sometimes people think, how will God speak to me? There are people who, who go on their knees to pray. They say, what if God speaks? They are afraid. I mean, church goers now. They are afraid that if God speaks, they may run. Why should you be afraid to hear your father's voice? You shouldn't. Now, Jesus said something in John chapter 6. Let me show you. Verse 45. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Did you see that? Everyone who has heard, not who shall hear. Everyone who has heard and have learned from the Father will come to me. Jesus speaking now. What's he saying? He's saying, if you are going to be my true disciple, then you need to hear from the Father yourself. So it is the Father who will reveal Jesus to us. 
How does the Father reveal Jesus to us? By the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He reveals him by the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You, you, you need to get this. Because without this, I don't know how you live a Christian life without what I'm sharing with you. Without this information. Without you practicing it. Because listen, you've got to be convinced. You've got to be sure that God is in your life. The days we are approaching, come on now, it's not a time for sissies. It's not a time to joke. It's a time to reaffirm and affirm that you truly belong to God and that he is with you. Remember, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that you will boldly say, So it's not just a promise for him to keep. It's a promise that he spoke out the end so that we will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man will do to me. You should be bold enough to say that. But how will you say that? When you don't even trust the Lord speaking to you. So Jesus said, first, you must hear God for yourself. And you must learn. How will you learn? He will teach you. When you have learned and have heard, you will come to me. Why would you come to me? Because my voice will sound like what you have heard in meaning. That's how it works. So, if this is not working in your life, your Christianity is questionable. I'm sorry to tell you this. You must, you must be confident in that fact, that aspect, that I hear God. You must be bold enough to say to someone, if you are not, then you don't have it. It's as simple as that. If you are not bold about it, then you don't have it. If you're not bold to say, God spoke to me, then you don't have the voice of God in you. But as I teach right now, listen to me. Because I've, I've seen this over the years with God's children. Do you hear God? No, eh, no I really can't say God speaks to me. Yet the same person will be telling you, do you know the other day I wanted to do this? Something now told me I should not. And then I now refuse to do it. And then see what came out of it. Thank God I, I obeyed. Who is that something? It's not something. A voice came to you. Now, can you begin to master and acknowledge that voice? See, I've taught you this thing before. Acknowledging him is what makes the power to flow easily in your life. When you acknowledge him, see, you just acknowledge him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Jesus said you will first hear the Father. You will learn from the Father. And then when you hear me, you will come to me. That's how it works. So you take your offerings before the Lord. You should hear from him. If not, you give it to your church. Your church will receive it. They will be happy. But it doesn't mean that you have given God an offering that day. I'm telling you the truth. I'll tell you why. Because God doesn't play with his money. Everything he does is based on purpose. And that's what he wants from every one of his child. Purpose. Be purposeful. Be purposeful. Be courageous. Know that, listen, God is the one sending me on this. He's the one instructing me on this. John chapter 10. Let me show you something there. Verse 16. Jesus speaking here and he says, Oh, I, I love this. And other sheep I have which are not in this fold. Them also I must bring and they will hear my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Did you see that? He said, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. Which fold, which fold is he talking about? The Jewish fold. See, I have other sheep that are not of here. So Jesus in this way recognized 
that the work of the Spirit of God is taking place in other parts of the nations, other parts of the world. So he says, them also I must bring, and how will you know them? He says, they will hear my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. They will hear my voice. So he has other children scattered every part on every part of the earth. He's got them. But the mark of every child of God is the fact that they hear his voice. They pay attention to hearing his voice. And they are confident to say to you, God spoke to me. If you're not confident to say that, then you have a believing problem that God truly will speak to you. And that's a problem. That's a danger on your side. Our walk with God is ruled by this. His voice. Remember in the book of Psalms, he said, what is man that you are mindful of? What is the son of man that you visit him? How does God visit you? What does he visit you to come and do? He visits you to come and share his heart with you. So they see it and say, what is man that God will go, that I am going to visit this man? I am, oh, you don't understand these things. What a blessing, what a blessing. And you are not taking this seriously. When last can you confidently say God spoke to you? When last? Now that's why I'm bringing, I'm bringing this aspect of tithing by the voice of God to you. So that whenever you receive money, you remember. You know, that's what J J J J Moses was telling him. And thou shalt remember the Lord your God. How do you think he wanted them to remember him? He says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. How do you remember him? Whenever you receive money, you take out the tithe, and you recognize and acknowledge that that money, that blessing came from the Lord. And then you give him his tithe and allow him to guide you or to direct you or to speak to you on where you should take that tithe. And this is exactly how the blessing of God is going to flood the earth. Because hear me, there is a coming flood of blessing. Hallelujah. Yes, a coming flood of blessing is coming on the earth. And it's coming on God's children. And that's why I pray for you right now. That you will not miss your blessing. You will not miss your blessing. Every word you are hearing today and previously, they are all making sense to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, they are making sense to you. And the voice of God is getting loud and loud in your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, a miracle is taking place in your life today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.